Hey guys, welcome back to The Investor's Podcast YouTube channel, where today I'll break down the basics of commercial real estate investing. Did you know that with just a few thousand dollars, you could tap into the returns of an entire asset class that millions of other investors are overlooking, while also earning double digit percentage returns? Hi, I'm Sean, and this channel is all about the principles of investing. From stock tips to iconic billionaires, the best strategies and our favorite tools, the Investors Podcast has everything you need to know. In this video, we'll explore the benefits of commercial real estate investing, why it's okay to start small, and our favorite tools for finding properties. Okay, let's get started. As opposed to residential real estate, which refers to markets for individuals buying out single family homes, duplexes, townhouses, and other units designed for living within, commercial real estate refers to properties leased by businesses for their operations or large multifamily rentals. This category of properties can include everything from a small storefront for a mom and pop business, apartment complexes, entire shopping centers, warehouses, to even medical facilities. There's a tremendous amount of opportunity for savvy investors then to use commercial properties as a source of diversification and cash flow generation as businesses become your tenants and securing long-term leases from properties you have an ownership share in. As the size of the space for lease increases, so does the expected lease term, or in other words, the number of years that tenants will pay you for the right to use your commercial property. Within the four main types of commercial real estate, which are office space, industrial use, multifamily, and retail, there are also typically grading systems that reflect the quality of a given property. Class A refers to deals with the newest and most up-to-date buildings and infrastructure, appealing aesthetics, and the best locations, while Class B properties will be better targets for restoration and would typically have less price competition to purchase. Beware of Class C properties though. These are the oldest buildings with the most urgent need for maintenance. In some cases, they can be cheap opportunities, but beginners are best off staying with a more conservative approach. Another thing to know is the four main types of leases used in commercial real estate properties. These are single net leases where the tenant is responsible for paying property taxes, double net leases where the tenant must pay the property taxes and insurance, triple net leases where tenants pay for the property taxes, insurance, and also for maintenance. And lastly, the other type of lease is called a gross lease where the tenant only pays rent while the landlord manages all other expenses. Should you become the landlord of a commercial property, these different lease types will shape your expected return and level of responsibility in managing the property. For this, real estate management companies are often employed to assist with collecting payments, managing and finding tenants, property upkeep, and more, which of course though comes at an additional expense. One advantage of commercial real estate is the relative stability of its returns. While renting a single residential property may typically see tenants stay for a year or two on average, businesses acting as commercial tenants may have fixed leases for many years, if not decades. With the right property and tenant, you could lock in an arrangement that pays you a 10 to 12% cap rate, which is a real estate term that refers to your annual return on investment that divides the expected net operating income by the property's value. Another benefit is purely psychological though. Studies have shown that it's quite difficult for us to see the value of our savings swing wildly in the stock market each day. While stock investing is of course great, there's pressure to remain stoic in light of constantly fluctuating markets. This is much easier for commercial real estate investors though, since the value of their properties will stay more constant over time. And as a bonus, no one is flashing their prices in your face five days a week. On the downside, this space has historically been defined by complex purchasing processes, government regulations, bureaucracy, and even high taxes. Additionally, during economic downturns, the credit worthiness of your commercial tenants may become a source of risk. You'll want to ensure that your tenants are financially stable enough to weather recessions without having to suddenly vacate your lease agreement because of liquidity issues. That said, there are now ways to fractionally invest directly in commercial real estate with relatively small amounts of money in professional teams that navigate transaction complexities and screen for quality tenants on your behalf. So let's talk about small deal investing. 
Contrary to popular belief, investing in a slice of commercial real estate deals isn't really that hard anymore. So why allow this space to be dominated by professional investors and corporations when you could cut out a chunk of the pie for yourself? The beautiful thing about making small investments in commercial real estate is not only that it's possible, but that there are probably far more opportunities than you'd expect. Traditionally, individual investors have had to use real estate investment trusts, also known as REITs, to buy shares in companies that invest in and lease commercial properties. This is certainly a fine option, but oftentimes better returns are found when cutting out the middleman and investing directly in deals. And for some, it's just more fun to have a personal stake. To find opportunities where you can invest a small amount of capital to participate in commercial real estate markets directly while delegating the management and paperwork, we have a few favorite resources such as PassiveInvesting.com and CrowdStreet. These sites are really great for vetting opportunities, removing barriers to entry for investors, and most importantly, simply providing you with the relevant resources to understand the deals and expected returns with respect to the risks. Plus, it's free to sign up. So let's hop on over to CrowdStreet's site to see what's going on in their marketplace. All right, so we made it over to the CrowdStreet site and I wanna show you their tagline on the left here that frames how I really like to think about this style of investing. Quote, you should be earning like a landlord, not working like one. Our investments are passive, giving you the potential to earn income without the maintenance or operational responsibilities of owning a building. I think one of the biggest obstacles for investing in real estate is the prospect of being a landlord. It's pretty intimidating and it's much more of a hands-on experience than what people who primarily deal with stocks and bonds are used to. So let's scroll up here and click into their marketplace. Here we can view projects available for investment. As you'll see, there are a ton of past and current deals to explore, and there are filters that enable you to find results based on the property type and investment type and location. So let's use this deal here as an example. You'll notice that this is a $57 million industrial property with a $25,000 minimum equity investment located near Chicago, Illinois. And on the right, you'll see a breakdown of the deal. Firstly, the targeted IRR refers to the internal rate of return. This figure is derived from the property's anticipated cash flows and IRR differs from other metrics in that it accounts for the concept of the time value of money, meaning it's calculated as the discount rate that makes the present value of all cash flows from an investment equal to zero. So IRR can help investors compare different investments based on their yield while holding other variables constant. Beneath the target IRR calculation, there's a measure here called the target equity multiple. In real estate, equity multiples are used primarily as a measure of the total return paid to an investor. The equity multiple is found by dividing the cumulative distributions from a project by the paid in capital. As a result, the equity multiple differs from the IRR in that it does not take into account the length of the investment period or the time value of money. Another notable difference is that the equity multiple is static while the IRR is variable. For example, if an investor puts in $100,000 and gets $200,000 back in total return, that is a two times equity multiple. It has no bearing on how long it took to earn that return though. The third major term you ought to know here for commercial real estate returns is known as the cash yield, or also known as the cash on cash return. For this project, the average targeted cash yield is 1.4%. This is a fairly simple calculation that's reached by dividing the annual pre-tax cash flow by the total cash invested. For example, if an investor puts $100,000 into the purchase of a property and the annual pre-tax cash flow they receive is $10,000, then their cash on cash return is 10%. Investors should be cautious though to equate a targeted cash on cash return to a guaranteed debt coupon. The actual cash on cash return may be higher or lower than the targeted number. Even though it's a targeted metric, the cash on cash return is the most useful metric to estimate the distributions that an investor might receive over the course of the investment period. While we won't go through all of the details today, I did just wanna show you some of the other resources that CrowdStreet provides 
to help you do your due diligence. Firstly, you'll see some details about the sponsors who are participating in the deal alongside you. This sponsor is putting down 30% of the equity needed to fund the investment, which ensures that they're thoroughly aligned with your interests. Below, there are full breakdowns of the property, surrounding market, and even the investment strategy, which also includes details about distributions, fees, use of funds, and a whole lot more. You can also read over the business plan, construction timeline, architectural and floor plans, and even a breakdown of demographics. For those who love doing their own research, there's no shortage of information provided. And for those who find this a little overwhelming, fortunately, CrowdStreet has educational resources that'll help you get up to speed here. To wrap things up today, I'll just say that commercial real estate investing is an excellent way to add cash flowing assets to your diversified portfolio and investing in the space directly has never been easier, honestly. While it's perfectly fine to use REIT stocks traded in equity markets, which most non-accredited investors will have to do anyways, there are ways to invest directly without having to put up millions of dollars. For investors who meet accreditation criteria, which are typically premised around a certain income level, net worth, or education level, platforms like CrowdStreet are an amazing way to invest alongside others in sizable deals with respectable expected returns. Just a reminder, nothing in this video is financial advice, and for full transparency, we have at times been sponsored by both CrowdStreet and PassiveInvesting.com, but we were not paid to produce this video. If you like this sort of content, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. Tell us, would you want to invest in commercial real estate? Please also check out our book reviews and mini series on how to invest in stocks. See y'all next time. Getting started is often the hardest part in investing as stocks may invoke flashy Wall Street depictions that seem daunting. However, with this series, you'll learn what's necessary to not just beat the pros, but how to build a better financial future.